Dat was nog nooit zo zaak in ons land geweest. Nee. Dus, dit is verregaande. Doctors went berserk and started stabbing them. That was not how we planned to do it. He was unconscious but still alive when they set the car on fire. And I know he fought every second to come home to me and my daughter. Admitting what I had done and how sorry I am doesn't bring them back. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Wel, hulle het ons leven rond en nou gemaakt. Ek het in vier jaar nog nooit gaan kry die neerskoopie. Ek kan jou nou vat, dan loop jy saam met my. Dan loop ons een president in. As hulle my sien, spoeg hulle my my gezicht. Daar loop die moede naar sy ma. Sy het my nou die dag weer gesê, ma, hulle kan my levenslang tronk toesteer. Maar ek gaan nooit in my leven sê, ek is skillig aan hierdie goed waar ek nie skillig is nie. Want dan gaan my kinder dink, ja, my ma is een moedenaar. Sy sê en ek is nie. Ek glo 100% in haar onskuld. Wat die ouwer wil sy kind in die tronk hee? I can honestly say I've spent the better part of three years numb. Zach and Cecilia and Marinda have taught me a very hard lesson that you can never look at somebody who has a good job and a house and a car and children in primary school and speak about God and you can never know for sure that they're good people. Two families on opposite sides of one of South Africa's most unique murder cases. It all began at the Kasana block of flats in Krugersdorp. Two separate flats were home to maths teacher Marinda Steyn, her teenage children Leroux and Marcel, as well as Cecilia Steyn. In the late 2000s, they, along with Zach Valentine, his wife Michaela, and John Barnard, joined Ria Grunewald's Overcomers Through Christ Christian group. Overcomers Through Christ, the first time I found out about them was approximately 2007. They used to come to the school and then in, um, in, 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 in recess time, in the hall, they used to sing songs and tell the people about Jesus Christ win souls, and try and get the children involved. In July 2012, tensions began to rise between Ria and Cecilia, who were involved in a romantic relationship. A new splinter group called Electus Perdius, or Chosen by God, was formed. According to court testimony, Cecilia was the group's leader. I don't have an evil twin, I might have an evil twin, hang on. Um. <laughs> It's Cecilia, so I thought it was Celia. No, it's Cecilia. I miss our regular Tuesday walks. I miss asking you what to do. I miss the way you will tease me. I miss our late night horlicks. Oh, it's my kind. Oh, so. Ja, het sê een van die gevonniste mense sy kleren aan en hulle het haar kleren aan. Ze was een gehoorzame kind en ek het nooit probleme met haar gehad. Cecilia het nie geleer he, as het onderscheiding sy kry. Sy was een baie goeie maat, nog steeds. Die grootste fout wat sy gemaakt het, is toe sy met Rhea, met Rhea dier mekaar. I got to the point where I realized that um, this is not about Christianity, this is not about Jesus, you know, it's not about saving souls. It was very dark, um, it, was, it, it, it felt evil, and so we left. For me it was just a general sense of unease. Uh, when you go to visit somebody's house, it's not socially acceptable to take them through to your bedroom. Um, the way Leroux and Marcel, as I've previously said, would just go and sit on the floor, almost like obedient dogs or children. Um, Cecilia's husband was never present during the conversations. It's, I got the sense that he was afraid of her. Now, working at the Cradle of Hope, Candace Ellison and her fiancé, Jared Jackson, were recovering from drug addiction in Krugersdorp. 
They were selling sweets to make a living when they met Cecilia Stain. She bought all the stock, all the chips and sweets and suckers and everything, no problem. And we thought we were very lucky that night. Uh, you know, we'd met somebody that was, we felt we'd met somebody that was kind. The Electus Padillas group, seemingly under instruction from Cecilia, started targeting members of the Overcomers Through Christ group. Slash tires, fertilizer bombs, and threatening messages eventually led to the start of the four year killing spree. On July 26, 2012, 33-year-old Natasha Berger and her 66-year-old neighbor Joy Boonsayer were stabbed to death in their homes in Centurion. Marinda, her daughter, Zak and Michaela, had to one day to get out. I wrote a letter to Tanya Briefila to say that Natasha came to see me this dringend, Tanya Joy. Natasha came to the house to get the paper to get out. And nog die kaars boot opgelost, dadelijk na dan die joy toe geloop, want sy het nie geweet wat is die probleem nie. Met die inkom geloof ek, um, hulle het daar met die hamer gekap. Die aanval was so breedaardig en vinnig gewees dat um, sy het nog met die papiertje in die hand geleem met die oor oop. On August 13, 2012, Pastor Reginald Mendixon Dixon from the Overcomers Through Christ group was killed in his home in Honeydew. He made her a very bitter person, yes. Sy had to be killed. I decided so, yes. I wanted also to feel what it feels like to kill someone, and I wanted to kill him. Dressed in police uniform and disguises, Mirinda, Zach and Marcel entered Ben Dixon's home. Ben Dixon was hit with an axe before being stabbed to death. Marcel had to stand and look at him to do it. She was not betrokken daar nie, maar she had to stand and look. It was an adrenaline rush to be there. It was scary, but exciting at the same time. And to actually do it, I felt a release after doing it, like I've never felt before in my life. Continued threats, including petrol bombs and cars covered in animal intestines, led to the overcomers through Christ group being dissolved. Michaela Valentine also wanted out, but her desire to leave cost her her life. Before that day, um, Zak and I spoke and he told me that um, she wants to go to the police and she's not happy. But even before that, he was not happy with her either because she was unfaithful to him. So the two of the things together, he felt that if he had to kill her, he would make a mess of it. On October 4, 2012, 23-year-old Michaela Valentine was drugged by her own husband before being hit with a hammer and stabbed more than 60 times. With the overcomers through Christ group dissolved and any threat of someone going to the police gone, the group soon found themselves battling another problem. Cecilia has a man at work, so that is cost to keep. In um Marinda kon met haar schoolsalaris kon sy voorsien het. Maar as gevolg van Cecilia's levensstijl en al haar siektes en soekundig is, hulle sou moes aanhou met die moorde. On November 27, 2012, Peter and Joan Meyer were lured to a business meeting at their home. The plan was to rob them and bind them and put them in the pool. The pool didn't have water in it before. So at a point when everybody was comfortable sitting and talking, I said... Um, this is not going to work for me. And I took out the gun and I said, lie down. And um, um, <laughs> we bound them with a, with a, between Zak and I, between us, we bound them with a cable ties. But he started acting weird. Zak just went berserk and he started stabbing them. And I basically went into shock because that was not how we planned to do it and we didn't know where the money was yet. With Zach Valentine having worked at Discovery Life, a plan was made to fake his death in order to cash out a just over 3.5 million rand life insurance policy. The only obstacle, who would be used as Zach's body double. On the 16th of December, he went out in the morning and then he came back and, and he was in a good mood. Uh, things were going well for us at that stage. Things were looking up and uh, he kind of very casually said, yeah, I bumped into Cecilia and Zach, and they asked if I could help them later on this afternoon. And I went, oh, all right, uh, help them with what? And he went, I don't know, they just asked me for help. Now, do you mind if I just refer to him as Zach? Yes. yes. Um, 
passed away on the 16th of December last year yeah. in Pietra Stein in the Free State from a car accident, a car burnt. Yes. Is yes. that right? The day before he left to go fly fishing in Plans. Okay. So he left, no, I mean he left here at about 6. So we took him like 4 hours later, he should be there. I had a sick feeling in my chest and I watched the sunrise the next morning, heard the birds singing and he still wasn't home. And I started SMSing Cecilia. She's the only person whose number I had. Uh, Please, can you send me Zach's number? Jared's not home. I just want to know what's going on. And she didn't respond, didn't respond. 44-year-old Jared Jackson was drugged, strangled by Larry Stein, before being left to burn in a car next to the road in Pietra Stein in the Free State. Cecilia was in tears. I was absolutely horrified. And I went, and Jared, where's Jared? And she went, no, no, Zach was on his own. Jared never came. And after, I think about the third or fourth day, I kept going back there to see if she'd heard any news. And she finally said, you know what, Jared's probably left you for another woman, just get over it. And they say the body was um, then taken to... to I was it, it was Bethlehem, hey? Yes, that's the closest to me. According to authorities, a dodgy deal was made, a morgue official forged a signature, and the death certificate for Zach Valentine was later issued. In the meantime, Zach Valentine went into hiding. But unfortunately for the group, authorities were onto them and the policy was never paid out. The group resorted back to their old ways. On January 27, 2016, 57-year-old tax consultant Glenn McGregor was killed at his home around Runfontein. 60-year-old insurance broker Anthony Schofield was killed on May 10, 2016. Father-to-be Kevin McAlpine was killed on May 26, 2016. On May 30, 2016, Joanna Ladhan was the group's last victim. The last three victims were all killed in an apartment at Kosana Flats before their bodies were thrown into the boots of different cars. The cars would then either be abandoned at a random location or the victim's body dumped next to the side of the road. It all came crumbling down for the group one night in May of 2016. A CCTV camera close to the local spa captured two teens in balaclavas withdrawing money from one of the deceased's bank accounts. Colonel Fert Kruje had the kids on Facebook ook opgestoor. Toe het hy dit vir Amanda Steenkamp gee, vrou adjudant, wat gezicht samenstellings doen. En toe het sy hulle 100% precies een link en gesê, dit is die twee persoene wat die geld getrek het. Within a few weeks, all of the other suspects were arrested. Having allegedly had an affair with Cecilia, Marinda Stein drew up a new will, leaving everything in her possession to Cecilia Stein. To I did lees, um, was I bang stelt. I had geheil, tran het afgelopen sy bang en sy lip het so begin bewe. Um, sy kan maar van kwaad geit. Um, maar toe het besluit nie, hy gaan nou die waarheid praat. Leroux gave a new version explaining all the details of the horrific killing spree. As gevolg van die testament het Leroux nof my gesê, hy het die mense vermoor in die woonstel, toe na die woonstel toe gegaan. Ek het die ander vier wapens goed binnen in die woonstel gekryk. Daar was baie vlakke op die mat. En dis toe ek die forensische mense gekryk om die bloestaar te kom spuit. En daar het ons Schofield so bloed gekry saam met Leroux in. John Barnard, Marinda Stein and Leroux Stein are all currently serving various sentences ranging from 20 years to more than 11 life sentences. While the remaining three are said to be sentenced on August 12, 2019, they were found guilty on charges including murder, fraud and intimidation. I know that um, me testifying and telling the truth and admitting what I had done and how sorry I am doesn't bring them back. And I, I realized that it doesn't take the pain away and that you, you, you're going to work with that for the rest of your life and I contributed to that. And all I can say is I'm sorry. 
I'm very sorry.